Doc and, and Russ are making their first, first professional, professional appearance, appearance tonight. tonight. here and this is Seaside Online the week in review. What a week this was Doc. Yeah Russ I'm sorry you got so upset you Ooh. built a memorial to me I mean uh, I mean uh, I broke my heart here and I, I, I mean I, I see people praying lighting candles for me. That's what we're doing here that's what we're doing. Oh <laughs> but I see good it. it was a dream. It was a dream that's good <laughs> I'm glad. Uh, let's see this week uh, we got over to the bakery Yep. Uh, they had Harry Potter over there. That was a good good thing. Yeah, they got a couple of the pot. I call them the potettes. You know, the, the girls are in Harry Potter. Well, he's only got girls over there. Yeah, that's a tip, which is fantastic. And then they brought a unicorn in. Unicorn was great. Yeah, uh, the carriage. That unicorn looked a lot like that white horse they had a few weeks ago. But I'm but I'm not sure. Don't go there, Doc. <laughs> Don't go there. That was the unicorn. Yes. Um, and the one thing that we noticed in the window. He had a violation posted, and I guess the town is giving him a hard time on, uh, I think it was as a result of his Christmas in July. And I'm not sure, you know, there's two sides to every story. Yeah, we didn't get the other side I'm yet. not sure, you know, what the real issue is. But I would have thought they could have worked it out I'm without sure they a will. fine or whatever. You know, he does a lot for the town, for the kids. Oh, he and does all, a lot you know. for the kids and uh, the, the town. I mean, every time he has something, if there's a... Uh, an award or something, half of it or all of it goes to the contestants, right? Or half of it goes to uh, a charity. Yeah, I think didn't yeah. the last uh, yeah half, half the money went to the Triborough. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. So you know, uh, you know, I guess he made a misstep, but you know, hopefully the town can work it out with him. Uh, I'm sure they will. Yeah, yeah. And uh, maybe now, Russ, uh, after I'm back from the grave or whatever, you could go no. out and do the <laughs> do a beach report. You want a beach report? Yeah. You got it. All right. I'm doing it this way. All right, week. good. All right. You did a great job last year, but I'm doing it. Okay. Watch how I do. All right. All right. I'll be back. And now we're going to flip to Russ. Hello, Russ. Yep. Hey. Good morning, everybody. Russ and Doc out here doing you the beach report. Uh, right now it's uh, 1030 on August the 12th. And this is early, and uh, you can see a lot of people haven't come yet. Now, they, these people here can pick the spot of the beach that they want to sit on. Now, that guy out there on that boat, his motor probably is not working right. He's got his oars out, and he's, he's doing his best he can, but he's doing a great job out there. He's watching over. I'm sure that's one of the lifeguards, and I guess everybody has to take a turn to row themselves all over the place to be sure everything is right. But the beach right now is uh, very quiet. The water does not look rough at all. And uh, the breeze is coming off the beach, I think it is. It's gorgeous out here. And the birds are flying up and down all over the place. But as you can see, there's, there's not many people out here yet. But there, there is a few. Uh, if you look behind me over there, you can see all of the uh, surfers on their surfboards but there's not very big waves so they re oh there goes one there yeah, they got a wave down there it always amazed me they know where the big waves are going to be and that's where they go to do their surfing that's great good beach report Ross. i thought i did I very well thought week last week was very good too but oh. <laughs> uh, uh let's see one of the things russ that we need to do is 
we need to bring an educational side to the show. Yeah, everybody gets a few chuckles, but we need to educate our viewers. And I think a good way to do that maybe would be... Um, well, let, let me check and see if I can get a hold of uh, uh, my grandson and my son-in-law to, to maybe do something. Okay. I'll be right back. All right. Russ. Yes, sir. What's that on your head? Well, we're going to do a cooking of lobster report today. Oh, okay. So, so uh, I figured, oops, he's a heavy lobster up there. Yeah, no, we can get to eat that. It looks like he's been cooked already. We he's get done. To, you can eat that he's later. He's ready to go. All right. With that, uh, let's go to our first in our educational series. How to cook a lobster. Lobster Tales, or the tale of two chefs, the first in an educational series brought to you by Seaside Online. Here we have the master chef adding the lemons to the pot. Notice that he uh, cuts the lemons with a fork rather than a knife, and according to him that adds flavor to the lemons, but who knows. And now here, is that a nickel bag? No, oh, I think that's either bay leaves imported from Italy, or he bought it on the corner in Newark. But he's thrown them in the pot. And uh, what's he going to do here? Yep, he's about to leave. And here comes the chef number two. Now, this is the lobster chef, as you can clearly see by the hat. Now, all lobster chefs wear this hat. He's also a lifeguard, and that's because the pot is so large that if someone fell into the pot, he would be able to save them. He's qualified and licensed, so there's nothing to worry about. Uh, the master chef is back, and he's about to uh, cut up the celery and add it to the pot. The celery is uh, going into the pot. Look at the dexterity. Oh, the way he cuts that, that requires years of experience and training. Uh, beautiful. I actually think that wasn't enough celery, though. Well, he may have heard me. And look at the way he pulls that plastic down on the celery. It's amazing. He's just a, he's a work of art. Look at that. And, uh, oh, he wakes up chef number two, who I think had fallen asleep during this. Now, uh, he's about to leave and turn the rest of this over to chef two. Now, chef two is technically trained at uh, Johnson and Wales, and he's about to show you a technique preventing the lobster tails from curling. Now there's a couple of techniques out there. One is to put a skewer through them, but this particular technique requires two lobsters and you tie them together. Now watch the knot. Now he uses generally nautical knots and that's because the lobsters prefer nautical knots. Now just look at this. Uh, it's unbelievable the way this is done. Uh, you could Actually, if you wanted to try this at home, you could do it yourself, but I would uh, also recommend maybe using handcuffs. The lobsters seem to enjoy this. I'm not sure why, but uh, our master chef is working the knots, and uh, whatever knot you use, it really doesn't matter. Just try not to drop them. Now, just look at this technique. It took him years to perfect this. These knots are, uh, are, are require practice and practice. They're about ready to go into the pot. And let's see, here we go. Yeah, he's gonna take him right over to the pot. Oh my God, he's fondling, no he's not. Here we go, right into the pot. There we go, finally we made it to the pot. And there they go, down. And this is flash cooking. Oh, what's Russ doing there? I think he's stealing the lobsters. My God, you gotta watch that Russ. And here it is on the plate, ready to be eaten. Russ. I thought you were going to run away with that lobster there. I saw you there. Uh, I have to stay here. All of a sudden, at the end, the lobster was ready. You jumped in, put it in a sack, and you were off with it. Yeah. Well, I was going to bring one of that one in here, but I said, no, nah, I got this one on here. He's, he's behaving himself. He's not dripping from the water. Everything is good. <laughs> okay? All right. So hopefully uh, now you know how to cook a lobster. And... Uh, uh, Russ is back here, get rid of his oh. hat. Get rid of the hat, get rid of the lobster. It was tasty, Doc. It yeah. was delicious. Last week we had the uh, hunk on the beach. So this week we're going to have a beach babe. And uh, Russ was able to find two wonderful beach babes. I got twice as much as you got with right. the hunk. Yep, here they are. Hi, everybody. We're still on the 7th Avenue beach over here. We found these two young ladies came up. And uh, 
Where are you from? Tom's River. Tom's River. Tom's River. Oh, not too far. Okay. Um, what grade are we in? Or are we? Sophomore in college. Freshman in college. College girls. Better yet. This is all right. We're fine. Um, and then you need your name. Dara. Cassie. Dara and Cassie. All right. All right. They're doing fine up here. They're enjoying themselves on the beach. How's the water? It's a little cold, a little chilly. Yeah, it's a little warmer today, though. Than what else is going on been. today? Anything exciting? Hopefully, the surf picks up. Oh, it's, yeah. it's very calm out there right now. Yeah, it is pretty calm. Yeah. But the waves are going to get bigger. They're so. going to get better. Low tide. Definitely. Oh, yeah, of course. And I'll come back and I'll put my bathing suit on. I'll have a good time. <laughs> you could borrow my other board. Oh. <laughs> yeah, in the car. No, 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 yeah. no. This body does not do that kind of surfing. <laughs> I'd be lucky to hang on for dear life. <laughs> but you can surf real good? Not me. I can. <laughs> she can. All right. I can boogie board, but I just can't surf. That's what I do. Is boogie boarding? I do yeah. boogie board. That's yeah. fine. I can That's do that. good. Yeah. Okay. And thank you girls very much You're for welcome. being welcome. interviewed. We enjoyed having you here. Thank you. Thank you. Wait. Russ. Yes, sir. Very nice young ladies, college girls. I yes. see you go for the educated. I think. I try. Yep. I oh, try. Oh, that's probably what you recognize immediately that they were smart. They, yep. They were great. <laughs> and, uh, Russ, I see you stopped by the mom's beach and climbed into the kids' pail. <laughs> well, I wanted to see how, if it was dangerous for the kids and how much fun they could have in here. And it's a blast. <laughs> These kids can have a great. There's a sliding pole down. I didn't go down the sliding pole, you notice. There's a sliding pole where the kids are supposed to grab and just drop down to the nice soft sand right. on the bottom. I did notice there was a sign on it that says ages 5 to 12. You must have overlooked that. There was a sign for that? I didn't <laughs> see that sign. Where was that sign? Uh, right it was there. It was posted there. Oh, okay. okay. Next time I'll, I'll be more vigilant. All right. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I've been worried about, Russ, is when this is over, you know, where do we go? What do we do, you know? Well... And I saw the other day on one, see, on one of these home shopping shows, Frankie Avalon. Now, a lot of you don't remember who, or know who Frankie Avalon is, but some of you do. And he was on... I remember. Yeah, he was on Selling Sausage. Now, the last time I saw Frankie Avalon, he was trying to sell his sausage to Annette. Now he's on TV doing it. So. He sells there's real hope, sausage. There's time. hope for us, Russ, yes. after this. More sausage. <laughs> And uh, I guess we'll uh, flip to uh, time for the joke of the week. Oh, it's great. great All right. Great time. Take it, it away, Frankie T. Frankie T, joke of the week. This man walks into the psychiatrist's office and says, Doctor, I'm suffering from alternating reoccurring dreams. One night I dream I'm a wigwam. The next night I dream I'm a teepee. Then a wigwam. Then a teepee. Then a wigwam. Then a teepee. It's driving me nuts. What's wrong with me, Doc? Doc says, it's simple. You're too tense. He comes up with some uh, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. And uh, before we close out our show, we want to announce our t shirt winner for this week. Uh, and, you know, again, close, there's only a few weeks left. And uh, Jamie Jacoby from English Town is this week's winner of the t shirt. And we need to announce uh, who's going to host the show. Uh, we'll try to give you two weeks' notice because we know, you know, people may come from out of town. Uh, you know, so we're going to try to give you a little bit of notice as to who's hosting the show. So I don't know. I have to look at the calendar, figure out whether it's next week. We got to pick it a week after, but we don't want to wait till the last minute. We want to let you know in, in advance. Yeah. Right, Doc. Yeah. Oh, one thing we forgot, Russ, which has hit me is that uh, we took a ride up to the beach on, uh, when was it, Sunday to see the, uh, the sandcastle. sandcastle and they had kids flying kites. Yes, yes, the kids yep. were flying the little homemade kites. Right. They had to decorate them themselves yep. and they were flying them and then there was the sandcastle that was there and there was a real celebrity there. Yeah, too. the mayor was there as well, yep. yes. Yep. And the sandcastle was stronger than the storm, uh, you can see from the pictures here, yep. you know, but uh, that was pretty cool. That's I, great. I enjoyed that as well. I'm glad uh, I didn't forget to cover that. No, no, we got it. We you got aren't it. much help to me, Russ. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. With that, have a good week. Take care, everybody. Be safe.